Hey friends, this is Natalie Hoffman with flyingfreenow.com and I wanted to hop on and talk about divorce today. One of the things that I've been hearing a lot in the private flying free education and support group is um, there's a lot of women in there that are actually going through the divorce process. There's a lot of them that aren't, but some are. And one of the things that some of the feedback I've been getting is that they thought that it once they filed for divorce from their emotionally and spiritually abusive partner, that things were, would get better. Or some of them are on the tail end of divorce and their divorce is almost final or is final and they're still feeling really, um, they're not feeling good. Okay, things are, are still a mess. And so one of the things I've been trying to help them to understand and that I want all of you to understand too, is that when you get a divorce, it's not, things don't just automatically come together for you. And when, when we talk about flying free, we're not talking about you get a divorce and then you fly free and that's the end of the story. You fly off into the sunset, this beautiful butterfly and you're free now. It's not really life on planet earth at all. So even after you get divorced, your life is still going to be challenging, okay? The difference is that it's going to be challenging pre-divorce, your life is challenging with an abusive individual in your face all the time. Post-divorce, you don't have that, so there's a little more inner peace. And, um, and that's what's nice about it, okay? But the first, I tell people the first two or three years post-divorce, and sometimes when you divorce an abusive person, divorces often take, they're very high conflict, and they take a long time to get through. This is not your three month, generally speaking, you're not gonna have a three month, you file for divorce, then three months later you're divorced and you're moving on with life. It's not like that. Mine took almost two years. That's kind of, you know, that's very typical actually. So um, anyway, post-divorce, expect about two or three years of settling. And, you know, the, the dust has to settle. Your kids are going to fall apart at first, especially that first year. It's going to be very, very difficult. You're going to oftentimes women, um, these are, you know, a lot of these women are homeschooling mothers. They have, they gave up their career and their education in order to be stay at home moms and take care of their kids. And so they are now trying to find jobs They're Some of them are going back to school. They're financially in some distress because now they've had to split finances. Um, so there's all kinds of things that get that shake up and that it takes a while, takes time to figure all of that out. That is not even to um, mention the emotional upheaval in your life. You're still probably grieving unless you had a long separation prior to filing for divorce. You're going to have to go through the grief process and that is a long process. Grieving the loss of a relationship uh, that has fallen apart in this kind of way is has got so many layers of stuff going on there. That's why I highly recommend that you go through it with a therapist, that you have a good support system. It doesn't have to be a big support system, but you should have some kind of support system. Um, we have the Flying Free membership group if you want to join that. There's a lot of support there and education there. We'll walk you, we'll, we hold hands together and we walk through these things. Okay, so I wanted to address one more thing. Some people think that I promote divorce because I, my book talks about it. Some people have even left reviews on my book saying, this woman, she just, and by the way, the reviews are mostly overwhelmingly positive, but there's just a few people that make the point that, you know, this woman says it's okay to get divorced. And it's true. I do say it's okay to get divorced. Do I promote divorce? No. I believe that one of the key problems in the Christian culture today is that Christians try to control other people. Instead of just focusing on our own lives and controlling our own emotions and our own uh, reactions and our own decisions and our own behavior, we're constantly meddling in everyone else's lives, telling them, well, you need to do this and you need to do that. Like God is miraculously giving us direction for the lives of other people. That's not how that's not how it works. That's not healthy. And yet that is 
the culture, our Christian culture is so much like that. So we think that if, because, you know, we've got this Bible, all we have to do is say, hey, well, you know what, my Christian sister, the Bible says this, this, and, and this, and so therefore what you're doing is wrong and you better straighten up. And if you don't, then, well, I just can't have anything to do with you because, you know, you're just disobeying God and on and on and on. All right, that's not, that is not what Christ, that's not how Christ modeled his life. Or was, you know, he didn't, he wasn't a model of that for us. He was a completely, he modeled loving other people. It's all about the law, no, love, yes. Now, I'm not talking about that we just throw out all, all, uh, caution to the wind and we just do whatever the H-E double toothpicks that we want to do. I'm not talking about that. All right. I don't believe in licentious living just because we can. When we have the law of love at work in our hearts, we are going to genuinely love other people right where they're at. And we are going to genuinely love our own bodies and our own lives because that's what God, God gave us these bodies and God gave us these people around us for that express purpose to love and care for one another. And if we are actually genuinely doing that, we are not, we are going to naturally make decisions and have behaviors that are more nurturing and caring and loving and accepting. Because at the end of the day, we either have faith in God and what he's doing in the lives of the people around us and in our own life, or we don't. So I can't go up to you and say, you know what, you really, I really think that you need to do this, this, and this, and then your life will get better. I can't say that because I can't speak into your life in that way. What I can do is tell you, hey, let's say, oh, sorry, I have a, a friend who's made some very interesting cho lifestyle choices recently, and I, I did not tell this person what they should and shouldn't do. I prayed for them, and I asked God to show them. And he did, because you see, God is way bigger than me. And God's influence in this person's life is so much huger than mine. There is no reason for me to tell this person, you know, what you did is wrong. I don't have to tell this person that. This person already kind of had that conviction in their heart to begin with. And then they did it anyways. They got to see some of the fallout. They learned some incredibly important lessons and they are now walking on their way in, with a deeper understanding of who they are, of who God is, of how God's working in the world. And it has been a beautiful thing to watch. And all I had to do was trust God, just rest in God. I didn't have to dictate this to this person what they needed to do. I wa I just, all, my job was just to walk alongside of this person. That's what we need to do as Christians. So do I push divorce? Absolutely not. Divorce is a decision that is yours to make if you're somebody that is interested in that a, a possibility, that being a possibility for you. What I promote is the emotional, physical, mental, and spiritual health and well-being of human beings and their children. That's what I promote. And if that means that somebody needs to separate or divorce from an abusive individual who will not change then I will support that person through their separation and divorce. And if that means that that person wants to stay in that relationship and try to make it work and get counseling and get stronger within that relationship, then guess what? I will support that person 100%. I am behind each one of the people that God brings into my life, cheering them on with whatever God is working on in their life. Because God is powerful, he knows, and I don't. My job is to love, not to control. And until we as Christians understand that, that power and control over other people is not loving, it's abuse. That is the very definition of abuse. So as Christian women, as we are trying to extricate ourselves and learn more about abuse, we have to understand that the Christian culture at large also needs to understand that there is a culture of abuse within the church of Jesus Christ because there's a culture of power and control. And it's not just pastors and elders powering and controlling over the people in the church. 
We power and control over each other, don't we? I used to be a homeschooling mom. For 20 years, I homeschooled. I used to wear skirts all the time, and I had long, well, I still have long hair. And I was, and I was a blo- a conservative blogger who basically, I was really nice about it, but I was trying to get everybody else to do what I was doing because I thought that was what was best for them. I thought that's what the Bible teaches. I'm trying to help people. I love them, right? No, that's not loving. That's not loving. What's loving is to, and then and eat deep down inside, even though I would never say it, deep down inside when I would go to church, I would look at the people who weren't homeschooling. I would look at the people who weren't wearing skirts and I would quietly judge them in my heart. And it was a gross, icky feeling for me. I didn't like it. I knew deep down inside there was something fundamentally wrong about that. And so coming to a place where I can accept people where they're at, whether they're wearing skirts or pants, homeschooling or public school or private school, whatever, the, whatever choice that they have made, and I can just support and love them as a human being and as my sister or brother in Christ, that is a much more freeing thing. And what it does is it frees me to trust God and his wisdom and not my own. And that's all I have for you today. All right, fly free.